In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you all about the kind of mental struggles of starting an NFT project, things that freak you out, things that scare you, investing your own money, how to avoid getting ripped off, kind of, don't sue me if you do, and also things to think about when it comes to the kind of project that you wanna launch. Is it a me too project or is it something unique and does it offer a point of difference? Really important things. Let's go to the intro. This is the Tokonomist. Hey, welcome back. It's day three or part three. It's update three really of um, how to start an NFT project. I just thought I'd do a little short update today. Haven't really done a great deal more from yesterday. Um, actually, I went to the gym last night. My hair looks terrible. So I was wearing a cap yesterday's video. It's just really bad. It's just terrible. And it's because it's like a reverse camera. I'm putting it on the wrong side. Anyway, um, so I um, went to the gym last night about seven o'clock. I got a message, I was chatting to on the Discord about doing uh, development work. And it's the thing, when you do one of these contracts, particularly for for, um, for Immutable X, you are rolling up your transaction. So if you're trying to do a mint of, a, of, a, of an NFT project, the point, the reason why the gas, my phone's bleeping and vibrating, so it's gonna be annoying. The I've actually been procrastinating all day doing work. I've got some work to do for a client and it's like, oh, I know what I'll do. I'll do another update video. If you're trying to mint an NFT project on Immutable X, you're doing it for a number of reasons, but one of the benefits for people like, um, for buyers of NFTs is it's gas free. Why is it gas free? Well, it's next to gas free. It's because the website will roll up all the transactions into one and then you know, put them onto the blockchain. So it's kind of a ZK roll up, um, which is very you know, efficient. You know, rather than putting one transaction on layer one, you put you know, 20 transactions on layer two and that transaction code goes onto layer one essentially. So it's, a block within a block, so to speak. And that requires a little bit more complex work. Uh, if you wanna just do an NFT project on Ethereum, as you might have seen over the last night or two, you've seen Lil Baby Ape Club, then someone made Fast Food Lil Baby Ape Club. I've seen Mutant Lil Baby Ape Club. I'm waiting for flipped Mutant Fast Food Lil Baby Ape Club. It's probably the same people doing these things, if I'm honest. You've gotta be. Uh, but this shows you how easy it is to, to just load a, a project onto Ethereum. And if you're a dev and you know how to do it, then it's your gold, aren't you really? It's money for old rope. Um, Immutable X is a little bit more complex at this stage because it's newer and there isn't so, so the tools or isn't as many contracts to, to copy. So I've been speaking to someone in Discord and as I said, I found, I found a developer who can do this, but it's not cheap. And I think one of the problems you, oh, I'm certainly coming up against is it's chicken or the egg, you know, do you, I'm selling a property. I bought a property in the north of England a while back. I bought it at an auction for about, I don't know, $40,000, I say. And I'm gonna probably, have I got something, I've got a plastic tag on the back of my headphones. Brilliant, amazing, I'm like a right dick. Um, so I've done a bit of work on it. It's probably gonna, probably gonna get $60,000, $65,000 for it. And I'm gonna put that money into this project because that's what's gonna be the money that funds it. And I'm thinking, well, is that what everyone else is doing? Are they just dropping $60,000 straight into a project like this and not know? Like, I just say it seems crazy. Um, so I, and then it's real, I think look, there's a real frustration as well. I'm just, I thought I'd just tell you how I'm thinking and I don't know if not even if I'll upload this video, but I just thought it'd be quite cool to just diarize this. Like, guess it was, it's called a spade a spade. It's fucking annoying seeing someone drop a, drop a project called Lil Baby Ape Club, which is a complete rip off of someone else's work and immediately get fuck loads more traction doing nothing. Um, and I, actually I, I tried to, I was looking to look through some of their tweets yesterday and how many tweets they'd done to get where they are. And I'm like, they've used like one hashtag. Obviously they've got the ape thing and people, I think obviously it catches people's eye, it must catch people's eye. Let's, let's not lie. Like when we see someone tweet or comment on a Twitter and we see they've got a bored ape image, we, they, we give them a, probably more attention than, than we would give someone else who's got, I don't know, a pork 1984. Um, I have a pork 1984. I actually quite like the project, but they just don't seem to have, have taken off. Again, it's a project with a really interesting story and just struggles a little bit. Um, people don't want good stories. They want fucking one day pumps and then flip it. They invariably don't even sell it in time anyway. So, right, so um, I was looking at how much work they've done to suddenly get traffic and attention and sell out, and they hadn't done a great deal visibly. So unless someone's retweeting them, unless they're, they're getting the growth in the Discord, the Discord links are, is, is where the, unless basically, unless the, the, the whole traffic is bypassing Twitter and going via Discord, maybe. Um, 
and I was trying to see if anyone retweeted them to get that level. That's why for a joke yesterday, I changed the, the Gwamelins to like not the little baby ape club. Shoved a picture of a um, of a baby ape on there saying we won't be doing this. Um, here's something a bit different. And it doesn't really get any traction. I can hear my cat panting. I'm really concerned by it. Oh no, no, she's being sick on my floor. Brilliant. Um, I've got these Burman cats. They're really furry, and so they just drop fur everywhere all over the house and vomit it up as well so it's not great i can just hear this cat like having a nightmare in the background i want to go and check on him i'm not going to shout raffles his name anyway so um that's that's, that's frustrating that's a, that's a it's definitely a problem i'm thinking i'm having to overcome and i'm thinking shit, there's no way they drop 60 grand into into doing their project in that short space of time so um so i'm trying to do I'm trying to chicken or the egg so this is the problem you'll, you'll you'll come across and you'll come up chicken or the egg you know what do you do first you just go I'm going to build the most complex smart contract in the world. I'm going to have all the DAO system all working. Or do I just test the water first and go, right, let's do a bit of marketing at a small scale and see if it's picking up attention and picking up traction. I'm also aware that a project like this, and a couple of people I've been speaking to in the DMs who have been giving me advice. Um, for them, this is not a project necessarily that needs to have 50% ownership. It's not like a, it's not, it's not a profile picture project. It's, it's more than that, it's a VC style project. So there are gonna be people who want to invest more, um, particularly if they're just gonna invest as a hands-off way to get um, exposure to a number of different things. They wanna put more into it. So that's okay, I can have less people following on Twitter, but I suppose it's the real scare factor, isn't it? Of like, just, there you go, 60 grand. It's a lot though, you know? And it may not be to a lot of people, but I think for pretty much everyone in the world, 60 grand is a lot of money. Um, you know, I've, I'm fortunate in life. I'm in a fairly good place, and even I still look at that and go, "Well, fucking hell, that's twenty grand more, and I can buy a house in Manchester and let it out for nine percent yield." Yeah, I know that's not; those are rookie numbers, but um, it's bricks and mortar, and it's still going to be there. And if worst case scenario is I can live in the place, and I like Manchester, so it's not Manchester; it's outside of Manchester. We won't get fucked from Manchester in Manchester now for eighty grand. Um, that's in England. If you don't live in England. Uh, but um, I was patronizing. So that's what I've been kind of up against in my head. And so I was speaking to one of the devs yesterday and it's, I've got a couple who are sort of proposing numbers and it's still gonna be looking like $35,000 between 15 and $35,000 to get all of the work done. Um, and then they want percentage of what you, you mint. And you're like, well, hang on, you're guaranteed money, even if this doesn't go anywhere and you want something for the, for the no risk. I don't know, I just, I definitely think you've got to reward people who helped you get somewhere. And so I've been speaking to the people I've been speaking to, and this is not to knock them, I've been getting some really good feedback and things, but um, I don't know, it's just scary. I think it's really what I wanted to do a video about. I was like, hey, this is scary. Um, but we, we soldier on. So I've been, what I've been doing today, I've been doing something that I do in my own normal day-to-day -day work, which is to try and do a bit of um, keyword analysis. Now, if you, obviously there's a number of different ways people can look for um, NFT NFT launches where NFTs are going to happen. So you know you might type in NFT calendar, NFT drops, NFT launches, upcoming NFTs, all those things. And um, I put them into Ahrefs, which is a as uh, a keyword research tool for SEO. Where's my coffee? Ah, I'm so close to the camera. Hello, camera. Um, so I I'm conscious. I keep staring at the screen, my face, not the camera. So I'll turn the camera more. I did a bit of keyword research on Ahrefs and I'm looking really to see what are the top ranking pages because then if people are typing those in and I can see then that there is volume behind those keywords, I can then see what are the top pages or pages I want to be on to rank for. So I've gone through a load today. I made a note of them all. Uh, you've got coins for like NFT drops, NFT launch. The thing is NFT drops is the parent keyword. So what happens in, if you want to learn about SEO, um, you've got parent keywords and keywords. Parent keywords essentially are the master keyword of a particular cluster. So NFT drop, NFT listings, and upcoming NFTs are all really the same topic as NFT drops. And it just so happens that Google probably favors the phrase NFT drops right now. That's it. So if you wanna, you can't target, you target all of those words by targeting one of those words in, in the reality. You wouldn't have, if you had a blog that wanted to write about them, you wouldn't have five pages, one talking about upcoming NFTs, one talking about NFT drops, and one talking about NFT launch, uh, launches because you just cannibalize all of them. So, um, but that's SEO and that's not NFTs, but you know, I do I do SEO, if you wanna give me a shout, if it's interesting enough for me. Um, 
But anyway, the top ones for NFT drops, we've got Cointelegraph, CoinMarketCap. Um, they get their data from Seafloor, um, non-fungible Coindesk, Crypto News, um, you've got Defiant, Decrypt, and a few others in there, and Block type, was it the Block Media or something. Um, Fungi or something like that. And I've just basically been contacting all of them and just saying, um, I would like to see what your marketing packages are, really. Just to get an idea, really, of, of where gets you the most eyeballs. Now, um, Coin Telegraph or Coin Desk don't advertise token launches, so we wouldn't be able to use them. So it's just trying to see where where you can get maximum eyeballs. And it may go back to being that promoters are the most effective means. And really what I do often is I just have a look around and I see which projects have had good Twitter followings and which promoters have promoted. And you can generally get a feel if the promoter is a, a bit shilly, like too shilly. Um, and also seeing the ones that have had good engagement when they've when they've tweeted. Uh, I think that's pretty. And then looking at the actual comments as well. So I think I mentioned this yesterday. Just trying to do that really. What I don't want to do is go crazy uh, on all of. When you start a business, any business, there's two types of businesses out there. There's ones that succeed and there's ones that fail. There's two types of businesses. There's me too, and then there's, um, I suppose, a change maker. You know, being an entrepreneur means. The very definition of, and I'm not saying I am, the very definition of an entrepreneur is, is to make change. It's a French word for that. Um, and very often people set up a business because they want to set up a business. They set up a, they have an idea for a DAP or a project because they want to have an idea for a DAP or a project. It doesn't mean they're actually solving a problem that anyone beyond themselves or a non-commercial amount of people would value. And if you're doing that, that only you value and you haven't tested if anyone values it and you haven't tested if it actually adds any value, then you're probably going to lose money on it and you probably shouldn't do it. The other aspect, that's because that's a me too business. You know, I, I, when I set up my vape businesses, I found a lot of I had customers who go and set up vape shops and they were crap. They were really bad quality versions, but they take a grand, a 500 pound, 700 pounds. They're not making enough money to make it worthwhile for themselves, but they're taking money out of our pot. They're making it harder for me to continue to recruit. They're taking it, making it harder for me to grow. So it, it all has a detrimental effect. They are just doing a me too pro project. They're never going to beat me because they're not making change. It's very hard to get a human to change their behavior. Um, you know, if you open up in front of someone and you have another shop they've never been in before, a lot of people don't want to go in there because they don't, oh, it's a bit new, I don't know what it's like. I'm used to that one. So we're creatures of habit. Not always, but a lot of time. So, and I think with this kind of project is I know that I'm doing something that's unique, but is it unique enough that people want it? I believe that there is enough people, enough investors out there who are naive to the market, who want some help, who want to get involved in big opportunities or people who perhaps haven't invested in nft before but are open to like buying like investing in um like the idea of being part of a vc or an nft project that invest in those things particularly within innovation so i think i've got something here um but it's whether or not i can get myself out there to enough people and so really it's a chicken or egg process like any business or any project is making sure i don't um put the cart before the horse i'm just using loads of analogies really but um just building up followers. I think so for example my target is once I've got about 500 um, emails on the whitelist email list and obviously that's the whitelist I will do a, I will do second batch of that but once I've got that I've got 500 people who are, who are engaged enough to have gone and done that then I'm gonna open the discord up um, and then from that we can then do like you know, discord invite links and things and let guys go out there and try and get some people involved to get let's get a chance to speak to people and then that, that grows from there as well so that's the value of a network I suppose um, but yeah, that's really it. Really. I just wanted to give an update what I've been doing. So I went to the gym last night and to go and do chest. That's what I was doing. Did legs to the body, chest. And then I got someone on Discord said, I'll have a quick chat with you about the project. And they are a developer. And I spent two and a half hours chatting to them, walking on the treadmill, didn't do any chest. And I was like, right, I'm going to go home now, having not really had a workout. So that was an absolute waste of time. Uh, but it was a very productive conversation. And... Um, yeah, impressive, uh, impressive uh, resume. Um, and it's just, it's just, it's just kind of getting your head around going, wow, it's a lot of money to pay. Um, fortunately, what we can do is we can do things like milestone payments and things. So that's what you what you want to ask for. So if you're doing a project like this and you do, it does have a high bar, high barrier for entry in terms of the contract. I suppose. You can go on. So this is why I, I say I have a plan B, Solana. Uh, I can read a lot of the Solana code. I think I could probably do much of the work on a Solana, and it would cost me a far degree less. But I also know that having done a poll, that a lot of people want to get onto Mutable X. And the good thing about Mutable X is it can go back onto mainnet, on Ethereum mainnet. So, and obviously more things are going to move that way, and they're going to Mutable X is going to become much more um, interoperable with, with with Ethereum projects, as we already know. So it's kind of 
one for now. Of course, it could be historic. It's a historic NFT. Um, but um, but yeah, so uh, where we where we've dealt with things is going to be milestone payments. So you say, hey, look, I'm gonna, I will, you know, I'm not going to give you loads of this money, and you don't want to be doing that. Otherwise, you can get caught out. I have another project that I'm working on called Clockbox. Clockbox is a time locked wallet for ERC tokens. So you can not just NFTs, but as in coins. So you could have, I don't know, a Matic token, and you want your Matic token to be out of your ability to sell it. You want to go, hey, you know what? I've got my this is my little advertising spot. Check out Clockbox. Clockbox is the time lock wallet that gives you diamond hands. Um, hang on, hang on. <laughs> I uh, wanted something that stops me from selling it, and I just thought, you know what? If I wrapped, uh, um, if I put uh, an Ethereum token in a locked wallet for four years, I will probably get so much value growth in that that it will cover the cost of all the development work. So if it benefits me, so it's kind of more for me really, and I want to put like a bit of. Bitcoin for my son to get in 20 years time on a on a ledger and I'll stick it in a safe somewhere but um in case anything happens to me or whatever um so that's what I've been working on but when I was working on that the first time around I got ripped off twice by people and it's just there's a lot of charlatans in this and a lot of snake oil sales people there's a lot of scumbags and you've got to be careful because even people who look you know my background I've told you my background you know you can you can so you can't you can't fool a crook. You, you can. You can fool a salesperson. The easiest person to pitch in the world is a salesperson because we get right wrapped into things. Um, but be careful because there's a lot of scumbags out there and there's a lot of people out there who take your money and they'll do a runner. And it's very, very hard to have a have an audit trail in this industry because the way everyone wants to be paid. They want to be paid with things like with crypto. And that's fair enough. We're in a crypto space. Um, and then on that as well, like, so if you're going to make, if you, if you know you've got to pay someone in crypto, you probably want to, buy the crypto now don't gamble down the line because you could end up getting a position where you can't afford to buy it you might be able to afford to buy it maybe drip feed it but like i'm going to buy the ethereum that i need to pay the development work and i'm just going to stick it away and that's it it's paid for it's a cost i'm prepared to understand now in my head in fiat value if you know if ethereum falls through the floor then no idea what i'm going to do um <laughs> That's a tough one. Don't take my advice on that. That's not financial advice. I haven't really thought that one through. It was 11 o'clock at night and I was just thinking out loud in my head. Um, I want to try and make these videos useful so you can kind of understand the things to think about. So what is there to think about? Well, if you're going to take someone on board, try and get references. If you're going to take someone on board, make sure you set up milestone payments where it's in their interest to complete the task and they can't just walk away. There's an old phrase that if you leave the safe door open, um, someone will stick their hand in and it was a phrase to refer to even bank managers and honest staff who will rob from a business because I'll give you an example I had a guy who worked for me for many years um, he was a very very good member of staff um, he was a sort of a junior manager anyway he had some trouble in his life and he the sales were very very low and the stock levels were going through. It just numbers didn't add up, and I'd been I'd taken my eye off the ball. And he was also in charge of the safe for that shop, and we didn't have very good cash handling rules. And I got some advice from a from an entrepreneur, who was some guy, the first guy to import boxer shorts into the UK. Uh, his name is Eddie Wolf. Very smart guy, wealthy guy, knows what he's talking about. And he said about how you need to have cash handling rules. Anyway, I went back and I spoke to my business partner, I went, or my, or my operations director. Oh, we don't even have this. Anyway, we started to bring them in and we started to realize something wasn't right. And we got the impression that the manager at the time was, was putting his hand in the safe and taking it. Um, it later transpired, he actually had a coke, coke addiction and he had some other issues at home with his uh, with his partner. And he was, I think he was gambling to pay for his coke addiction. It was just a bit of a nightmare. You know, you, took him, you take him out of the situation, you take him as an ordinary person very very nice guy he's not a habitual criminal um, there's no reporting to the police done because you know what can you do it's an addiction and yeah you've got to learn your lesson but the only the only punishment I wanted to give him was I don't want you to learn the lesson here but um, we if that makes any sense I don't know I just but we so what I did is like, I, I, I knew this we'd caught him out um, and we um I went to go and see him and I said um, look 
something's not really adding up when it comes to um, some of the admin and stuff. Is there anything you want to talk to me about? Anything you want to speak to me about? And I gave him a lot of opportunity. Um, and I gave him a lot of chance to be honest with me and to confess. I said, look, if anything's even wrong in your personal life, anything that's causing things to perhaps go a bit awry, I'm not going to be angry. I'd rather just you be honest with me. I'm going to give you a chance to be honest. And he wasn't honest with me then. And because of that, I had to let him go. Um, and I knew what the issue was. And and then within about two weeks of him going, the sales had doubled. Well, actually, straight away, they'd pretty much gone straight up. So the sales, we'd lost a lot of money. Um, he was a good bloke. Um, and he had his demons and he's, he's over them now he's a, in a better place in life um, but the safe door was open and there was no responsibility or not we weren't we weren't running checks we weren't keeping an eye on things and because of that it became an easy option for him to fix his problems probably with the intention that he was going to put the money back and it got ahead of him I don't know maybe I'm maybe I'm naive but um, but you leave the safe door open and someone puts their hand in. I met I met a guy inside uh, who was a bank manager. And was, this would have been an easy one to explain. Um, and he was he had he was living the life of like sort of keeping up with the Joneses. A wife who's got expensive taste, and he, um, he well he wasn't making ends meet to give her the lifestyle that he wanted to give her. She probably didn't even need that lifestyle, but he wanted to give her that. So probably on him as well. He's definitely on him as well because he's there in prison, and he was a bank manager. But um, there were some dormant accounts at the bank and he was taking money out to pay um, basically front run his loans, so debts and stuff. And then he paid the money back. So he wasn't, it was, he actually, he was a bit of an unfortunate one really. His offence really is breach of trust, not the money aspect. And one day he got his, uh, his new employee to do some audits and stuff with the dormant accounts, completely forgot it. He'd made a mistake and uh, she spotted it and she reported it to his, his, his line manager. And because he's been dipping his hands into the dormant accounts to pay... Rob Peter to pay Paul and then paying it back. It's a breach of trust. You leave the safe door open, someone puts your hand in. So when you're doing a project like this and it's all crypto and there's no paper trail, um, find ways to protect yourself. That's it. That's, I mean, this was a very long-winded way of saying, find ways of protecting yourself. Don't don't make the mistakes I did. Um, there are a lot of scumbags out there and a lot of people who also will, will take a liberty if they can. So that's it. That's pretty what I want to get out there. You can learn something from me. Don't make the same mistakes I did. So, uh, and I've made a lot of mistakes that with Clockbox. So this now makes me a lot, a lot smarter, hopefully, when it comes to this project and saying, hey, I don't want to give you $35,000 to do the contract. I'm not going to give you that in straight away. I'm going to give it to you in chunks. So that's where we're at with that. Um, and really, just a case of speaking to marketing people still uh, and trying to find higher quality ones. I'm in no hurry to list this product. I want to build momentum. I want to, I want to mint successfully. You know, I'm putting my own money on the line here, and I need to know that when I mint this project, um, that's not for nothing. So, um, day three, be careful who you give your money to and um, make sure what you're doing is unique. Because if it's not unique, you're going to lose a lot of money and you're going to regret not doing what I've just told you to do. Um, oh, one other thing as well, actually. So, um, one of the other problems you get when you do something, you suddenly see something that's very similar and you go, shit, that's really similar. So, I come across this something this morning in my uh, Medium uh, app. Uh, update and it's called Dow Launch. Essentially, it's like a Kickstarter platform, and it's kind of similar to one aspect of what I was trying to do with kind of a membership thing, ish. It's nothing like what I'm actually trying to do as an NFT project, but I saw it first and I was like, oh my god, that's that's like, it's essentially helps people raise capital using. I don't know. It just seems a bit shady, if I'm honest. Um, did I say their name? I hope I didn't say their name. It's not shady if I've said their name. I don't know if I said their name. There's a lot of like spurious projects on there the so far, but that's because early days. Actually, hang on, I'm not even. I'm gonna just wipe. What... Right, I'm just gonna wipe. Well, I've just said some things that actually I, I name dropped a project but I shouldn't have done. So to be fair, I'm not gonna say it. So um, I saw a project this morning that I thought, oh my god, it's really similar to what I'm doing. As it turns out, it isn't. But you do see those things sometimes when you um, so that's about it really don't make the same mistakes I did when it comes to trust with money because see, if you leave a safe door out someone someone will take it be careful um, with your commitment to these things and I think that's really in a nutshell just make sure what you're doing is unique as well if it's not unique then you're going to struggle when someone's going to find something. You know, I look out for projects all the time, and I think, oh my god, is that the same? And it's not, and then you're like, oh, that's a relief. 
And that's the only problem where I'm trying to take a bit of time to build up critical mass is what if someone else comes along and does it? Do you know what? If someone else came along, stole my idea and did it with the same purpose and the same intent and the same um, focus of trying to help the often ignored, I'd, I'd invest in it. I just want there to be this project. It doesn't have to be my project. Obviously, I want to run the project. I want to be the guy that did it. That's amazing. Um, and there is one more thing, actually. I was going to say in the in my Twitter, and I just thought, I'm, oh, it's, it's a bit vacuous on the Twitter. How we're, we're structuring how the founding team, that's myself and Grinny, and I'll bring him on soon. He's, we work remotely, so um, his job is the working with the artists to do ridiculous designs. Um, how we're going to be paid, we're going to be remunerated, is, is based on profits. People might think, well, how can you do that? How are you going to lose interest? You've got no, you know, if you, those who are paid, pay attention. Those who pay, pay attention. Well, look, this is very clear here. I'm not stupid. I'm under no illusion that if I found a project that sells out and does well and does some really interesting things, my Twitter profile is going to grow. I have, I earn value, social capital value by being attached to a project that's doing stuff, that's going places, that's doing well. That for me is probably going to be potentially more rewarding in the near term. So, um, Gonna be an influencer, aren't I? Uh, um, no, I just I, I, if it opens up more doors and more opportunities in this space, then that's a pretty good payment, isn't it? Um, that's kind of where I am at with 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 that respect. I thought I was going to put that in Twitter. I thought I can't really do it in 280 characters, and I'm thinking in case anyone goes, oh, how can he operate just based on profits? What if you don't uh, release or divest from from an opportunity until a year down the line? Like, well, I'm probably going to do fine out of it in the near term in terms of reputation growth so there's that um yeah well i'll keep i'll keep it short and sweet i'm at 27 minutes now um or thereabouts <laughs> so i'm clearly going to cut some crap out uh thanks for watching that's part three really i just thought i'd tell you about the uh the mental struggles of trying to start a project really so um thanks for watching uh, check us out guaymans.com nft diaries how to launch nft project and you can find me on twitter here Realtor Economist or Sears and Sears and Guamelins at Guamelins with the Guamelins Dow VC. So thanks for watching.